Welcome to part 2 of repairing a Southworth 12 inch steam pump, looking more closely at the pump to see exactly what the problems are. Some of the problems are immediately very obvious. In this clip I'm removing the water chest cover to have a look at the valves, because obviously one side of the valve system isn't working. This is a double acting pump. Water should be pumped out of the outlet at every stroke, but it's only working in single acting mode. I was very surprised when I removed the top from the water chest, because it is built nothing like the drawing. Instead of the usual poppet type valves, it's using Viton balls, quite large ones too. But this design in my opinion is far better than the original. These parts fitted into the lid are the valve travel limiters. On all pumps the amount of travel of the valve has to be limited otherwise they don't work. Everything is covered in sealant. There are two types of sealant as well, and some of the lighter coloured stuff is actually stuck to the balls. This is instant gasket or silicone rubber, which is even worse. Making gaskets can be quite fiddly, but once you approach it right, you can make them easily. I will use sealant between parts very rarely, and the sealant I would use would be Boss White or an equivalent, not this stuff. I need to have a look inside the cylinder. So here I'm removing the top cylinder cover. Held in place with, guess what, lots more sealant, it's really stuck. Normally I will free stuck parts like this by tapping the edge with a Stanley knife blade to free the cover. There are two or three potential dangerous problems here. One is that the Stanley knife blade is a highly tempered piece of steel. It's very hard, and if you hit it too hard it's likely to shatter. For that reason you must wear eye protection, and don't forget these blades are very sharp. As you can see I'm using quite a heavy copper faced hammer. This doesn't put too much pressure on the Stanley knife blade, but the mass of the hammer causes it to impact the work with a bit more severity. Eventually I do break the seal, and the next part of the job is to very very gently lever off the cover. I'm using a small screwdriver for this, it could do with being a bit broader, but if you're gentle with it, it works. I need to remove every trace of the sealant, and also clean up the parts generally. I'm starting off with what I once thought was a brass wire brush, but it isn't, it's just a brass plated steel wire brush, but either way it does the job and cleans up the part. I thought it would be a good idea just to clean up one of the mating surfaces, but as you can see, if I hold it by the nut it's no good, if I hold it by the register on top of the cover, then it's accurate. In this clip I'm using my small Myford ML7R lathe to take the finest of cuts across the bottom surface. This is the mating surface that contacts the top of the cylinder. I would estimate that I'm removing about one thou. This does actually machine a very small amount of the cast iron away, but gets rid of all the sealant. To clean up the outside edge I thought I'd try one of these, a friend of mine gave me some a while back, and they're like sponge scouring pads. Then I tried the wire brush, and this was much better at getting into the corners, so now the cylinder head is quite clean. Which is more than I can say for the port face. Here it is, and this is a mess. In the first episode of this series, I assumed that the main problem was that the valves weren't sealing, on this very rusty port face. Here I'm using some 400 grit wet and dry sandpaper, which is not even touching the rust. There had to be a valid reason why someone took this engine apart. I decided to use some automation, so I'm using my Proxon mini drill fitted with a wire brush, and as you can see, this really does highlight how rusty this port face is. It's almost like being a bit of a detective trying to figure out whys and wherefores of things like this. Here is a magnified image, and as you can see, it looks like a mountain range. Not the best surface to have gunmetal valves sliding over. At this stage though, little did I know that the reason for the pump being in bits was not just because of the corrosion on the port face. I'll tell you about this in another episode. By the way, I did get the job, and I gave the owner two prices, a minimum price and a maximum price. Not forgetting to add the fully insured return postage costs. In this clip once again I'm using my Proxon motor tool fitted with a wire brush to clean up the steam chest at both sides, removing every trace of any sealant. 
And here I'm seeing whether any of the 4BA bolts that I have in my box of 4BA bolts could be used to hold the steam chest back in place. But unfortunately the longest bolt that I have is far too short, so I'll be making some studs. After this initial clean, what I propose to do is put all of these parts into my ultrasonic cleaner. Using a special liquid in the ultrasonic cleaner, which converts any rust to another metal. More about that in a future episode. I still need to clean up the steam chest cover, I haven't done anything with that yet. And the only mystery that I've really solved in this episode is the reason behind why the pump wasn't double acting. There are a few undiscovered faults yet to come. It's about time for me to go because I'm about to set off and have a drive to Newcastle to meet up with John Mills who has a YouTube channel called Double Boost. John's a great character and he said I could bring my camera so I'm going to do that and get some shots of some of his steam engines. Even though I've spoke to John on the phone a few times, I'm very much looking forward to actually meeting him in the flesh, so to speak. If you're a Patreon supporter, you will of course see the footage in the next couple of days. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.